What is up people of YouTube, welcome to another day in paradise. For those of you guys who are new, my name is Cody McCarty, and today we're actually going to be talking about how to photograph wildlife, specifically with Sony cameras, my settings and stuff like that, uh, but this can apply to other mirrorless cameras, so just kind of dig through your settings if you hear similar terms and follow along. Now I'm currently shooting on the a7R4, one of my favorite wildlife photography cameras. I have played around with the A9 Mark II, A9s, and A7III's. This is the one that I like to stick with. Currently I only own the 100 to 400 lens, but I hope to maybe sell this and get a 200 to 600 soon. Um, but let's dive on into the settings. Now the first setting that I'm going to go over with you guys is going to help you track the action. Electronic viewfinders typically have some lag versus DSLRs with the optical viewfinder. However, with Sony's A7R3, A9, A9 Mark II, and A7R4, and I think body is going forward, you can update the refresh rate on your viewfinder so you can track the action better. You're going to go to finder frame rate and you're going to set it to high, essentially having it refresh 120 frames per second versus 60 frames per second. Now once you're ready to track the action, you want to make sure you're getting the most out of your cameras. I shoot compressed, I don't see a huge difference between uncompressed and compressed, but compressed is going to allow you to go in and have higher continuous shooting frame rates. Now once your camera is set up to capture as many frames per second as possible, we're ready to talk about the focus settings. Now personally, I love to use tracking expandable flexible spot as my primary focus for tracking animals. I'll get into the benefits of that a little bit later, but setting it up, it's only available in continuous autofocus. You can see that it's grayed out when you're in single shot autofocus. So make sure that your camera is set to continuous autofocus. Now the unfortunate thing is when you're using eye autofocus, specifically animal eye autofocus, this is unavailable when using animal eye autofocus. Now the last setting that we're going to set up is back button autofocus. This is going to sort of act like a safety if you can't track with the joystick the fast moving subject and you don't want to miss the shot. Now that we have everything set up, I think we're ready to go out and shoot. It's been super windy out here in Florida, I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot of talking, but I have the wetlands right behind me, and then I have open ocean right on the other side. I hiked out to the back here, hoping to find something. Uh, haven't found anything really yet, but I'll keep searching. I'm seeing if I can use this tree as some kind of cover for the wind. It's working a little bit. Um, something when you're out on your own, be familiar with what animals are out here. I made a stupid decision and didn't see what other animals are out here besides birds. And I almost, uh, well, <laughs> I ran into a boar. Uh, luckily we scared each other and he chose to run the other way and uh, I tried to fire off some photos but I kind of was more startled than anything and boars can mess you up. I will say one of the reasons I think I ended up being okay is I saw animal droppings and like kind of torn up dirt and I recognized in the environment that just didn't seem natural. So I was kind of on high alert. So I was a little prepared and I kind of knew like to uh, move slowly. Here's just a perfect example. These are fresh. I know to be on alert. Another thing that I'm observing is a bobcat has been hunting out here because there's a bunch of like bird carcasses and stuff like that. I don't think there's any predators larger than a bobcat out here. If there's like mountain lions, I should have done my homework, but I think I'm, I'm doing okay. Right now I'm looking 
looking at a rosette spoonbill that's uh, in front of me. Rosé, rosette, I don't, I don't know how to say it right. Man, this wind. Currently I'm testing the tracking with the two times teleconverter and surprisingly it's working really well. Okay, looks like he's wandered just outside of my reach. Now let's go ahead and use this spoonbill right over here flying in to give you an example of the autofocus and what it's capable of. If we look through the viewfinder you can see that it's created this box and no matter how much I turn my camera it stays within there. Kind of lost it there for a second. But once you get it in the tracking box, it should lock onto it as long as the camera can find it. In situations where maybe I can't get the tracking box to go around the subject, that's when I'll use my back button focus to kind of cover the whole frame and let the camera decide what it wants to isolate and track. You can see this is a little tricky because they're all right back behind this bush. And I'm trying to get them as they're flying out. And right here, back button autofocus. Needed that wide. Mmm, that sounds so good when you're shooting action and you get those high frame rates. I just love it. Forgive the, uh, the poor example of the tracking though. I was holding my phone up to the viewfinder while trying to control the movement with the fluid head and then also trying to snap photos with the shutter and play with the joystick. So there was a lot going on. Um, sorry about that. Wish I could have given a little bit better example, but I don't have a recorder for the viewfinder. If you guys know any, I would love to see your recommendations down below because that's something I think I need to start doing is showing you guys like what I'm seeing in my viewfinder as I'm out on these photo trips. Now one of the greatest benefits of these Sony cameras is just the autofocus capabilities. That active track is just essential. If you take anything away from it, setting up that active track and back button focus, yeah, back button focus, let, let, let me try again, let me try again. Back button focus, there we go. Getting that muscle memory to like where you can remember to push the button and stuff like that and transition in between is going to make it so you get more keeper photos and when you get that once in a lifetime shot, you're ready for it. Now, had I not been so startled by that boar, uh, I definitely think I would have been able to get it in focus by just tapping on my back button focus button, AEL, just so I can get the wide focus zone and get them in focus. But I was a little panicked because he had two directions to run. Thank goodness he chose to run the opposite direction of me because like I said, boars can mess you up. But just practicing getting out there and having that muscle memory is super important. You guys could see I went out several times, lots of different weather conditions. Pretty cold in Florida, which is just weird. Um, I did not expect that when we moved out here. Been super windy, so that's presented its own challenges. We have literally one hour, it's sunlight with little clouds and then all of a sudden it's overcast and gloom. Now I know the audio isn't pristine right now, but there's a lot going on. Me and Chelsea got our place, we move in next week, and hopefully uh, within the week after that, I'll have my office set up and we're gonna start cranking out videos left and right, and there's gonna be a lot of fun going on. So if you guys found this video useful, helpful, um, consider hitting subscribe. And if you guys generally enjoy my content, also consider hitting that bell icon. If you just like this video, but maybe you don't like my other content, consider giving this one a thumbs up. It goes a long way to support this channel. But thank you guys for tuning in right now. Until the next video, I'll see you guys around.